Welcome to Sage Audio. Today, let's cover the top 10 ways to use Sooth 2. But first, if you have a mix that you need to have mastered, send it to us to receive a free mastered sample of it with the link in the description. Reducing excessive resonances. Let's start with the obvious use for Sooth 2, which is to reduce resonances that make an instrument or a vocal sound imbalanced. I personally enjoy using it on my vocals and centering the pre-emphasis band over my low mids to create a clear sound. I'll also use a slightly higher sharpness and lower the mix a little before increasing the processing quality to reduce any phase issues. So let's take a listen to how the vocal sounds more balanced. I'm so sick of waiting and getting too restless to be in this dusty town. I've heard of this place where people forget and you get another try. Sitting vocal on top of instrumental. If we want our vocal to sit on top of a mix but not make the mix sound unbalanced, we could play Sooth 2 on the instrumental bus and sidechain the vocal. I'll use just about the same settings that I used in chapter 1, but with a higher mix setting. Now this way the instrumental is attenuated by any excessive frequencies in the vocal, letting the vocal sit on top of what's being attenuated. So let's take a listen to how our vocal gets placed in the forefront of the mix. I'm so sick of waiting and getting too restless to be in this dusty town. If you're enjoying the video, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. It's free and it helps us bring you more videos. Getting vocal to sit in the mix. If we want the opposite of last chapter, that is we want the vocal to sit into the mix and sound more blended, we could play Sooth 2 on the vocal and sidechain the instrumental. When doing this, I like to emphasize the mid frequencies. Now this gives the instrumental a more prominent role and helps it cover the vocal slightly. So let's take a listen to how the vocal is pushed back, but the overall mix still sounds balanced. I'm so sick of waiting and getting too restless to be in this dusty town. I've heard of this place where people forget and you get another try. Duck bass with kick. Bass ducking can be really helpful for creating a balanced low end. Now what's great about using Sooth 2 to attenuate the bass via a sidechain kick is that the attenuation will be frequency specific. Now this way parts of the bass that don't conflict with the kick are still going to retain their amplitude. Now since I'm having to perform this using the full drum loop as my sidechain, I'll isolate the processing to just the low frequencies. Let's take a listen to it. Remove irrelevant notes on vocal. This one is a little complex, but I think the idea is cool nonetheless. Now my vocal performance has four primary notes, in this case C, D sharp, A sharp, and F. With sine waves, I can create an instrument track that includes all of the notes not included in the vocal performance. I'll bounce this down to an audio track, then I'll use it as the sidechain for Sooth 2, which I've inserted on the vocal. What this does is attenuate frequencies that don't pertain to the intended performance, or in other words, cuts out out of tune or missung notes. I'll have to use sharper settings and higher quality processing to avoid phase issues, but the processor now makes the vocal sound more in tune and gives it an overall clearer sound. Let's take a listen. I'm so sick of waiting and getting too restless to be in this dusty town. I've heard of this place where people forget and you get another try. Remove out of key notes. We could do the same thing that we did in the last chapter, but to the instrumental. I'll use the same sidechain as last time, since it worked in this case. In my opinion, this makes the instrumental sound slightly more musical, since it reduces small aspects that don't coincide with intended notes. Let's take a listen to it. I'm so sick of waiting, and getting too restless to be in this dusty town. I've heard of this place where people forget Today's video is brought to you by Editor's Keys, a developer of shortcut keyboards and keyboard covers. Now since I use Logic Pro, I could try their wireless keyboard that showcases all of Logic Pro's shortcuts on the buttons. Or if I wanted to keep the keyboard that I already have, I could try one of the covers designed to fit whichever computer I'm using. They also have keyboards and covers for Ableton, FL Studio, Pro Tools, and more, as well as ones designed for video and editing software. 
so check them out using the link in the description. Use after saturation. Saturation is great, but it doesn't always create in-key harmonics, and it can also make a signal sound imbalanced. That said, I'll saturate with this PSP saturator and turn on oversampling to avoid aliasing. Then I'll insert Soothe 2 to reduce any added resonances. As a result, I get all of the benefits of saturation, the full sound and harmonic complexity, without it adding any frequencies that I already have and don't need more of. Let's take a listen to how the saturation is present, yet it sounds balanced. I'm so sick of waiting and getting too restless to be in this dusty tone. I've heard of this place where people forget and you get another try. If you're enjoying the channel, use the search box to watch more of our videos. Blend reverb into instrumental. This trick is a little strange, but I think it sounds good nonetheless. In short, I'll send my vocal to a reverb, in this case crystalline by Baby Audio, and then dial in my settings. After it, I'll insert Soothe 2 and sidechain the instrumental bus. With the EQ covering the full frequency spectrum, the reverb's reflections will be attenuated depending on the instrumental. As a result, the reverb really sits into the instrumental, making it a great way to have reverb on a vocal or any track really, while still making it sit into the mix. Let's take a listen to it with the reverb and the instrumental soloed. Smooth out phasing effects. Phasers and flangers make a cool effect, but sometimes they add resonances to higher frequencies. And we can try to isolate the effect to certain frequency ranges, but then we lose some of its sound. Instead, I like to insert Soothe 2 after a phase effect. In this case, I'll use the flanger from Cable Guy's ShaperBox plugin set to its liquid module. Now, since its attenuation is frequency specific, I could reduce artifacts and shape the overall sound of the sweep with the pre-emphasis EQ while still retaining the intended sound. Let's take a listen to it used on the bass. Very subtle tone balancer. If excessive resonances are present in individual tracks, then it makes sense that they'd make their way to the stereo output. With Soothe 2 inserted on the output, we could use very subtle settings and set the processing to mid and side, but with D-Link triggering. As you can imagine, we need to use very high processing settings to reduce phase cancellation and aliasing. Let's take a listen and keep in mind that the effect is going to be subtle. I'm so sick of waiting and getting too restless to be in this dusty town. I've heard of this place where people forget and you get another try. If you have a mix that you need to have mastered, send it to us to receive a free mastered sample of it with the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching.